Okay, we are going. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to chat, you can chat outside. But we are doing the Killer Termites Day podcast Sunday, July 3rd. If I can read. Uh, no, you know. Chad Shank, yeah. you can read. If this I is can, the proclamation if, from the city of Bisbee. That's if I can read. This is a long day of fucking heckling. My voice double, is Oh, bugs. shit. That was the heckle I never got to. Was, hey, the last time you saw a double header, it was latex, Roswell. <laughs> I never... I was saving that, and I, now I missed it. The, this is... Uh, says, City of Bisbee, proclamation, Killer Termites Day. Whereas the killer termites led the charge to ensure Bisbee, Arizona is named the best historic small town in America by USA Today. And whereas the killer termites, who were instrumental in spreading the word to over 250,000 social media subscribers and getting them to vote for our Bisbee. And whereas <laughs> in paying tribute to killer termites, we will declare Sunday, July 3rd, Sunday, 2016 Sunday, 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 Sunday. to be Killer Termites Day in Bisbee, Arizona. And therefore, therefore, <laughs> I, Ronald Ertley, mayor of the city of Bisbee, do hereby proclaim that Sunday, July 3rd, 2016 be declared as Killer Termites Day. <laughs> So, Sunday, July 3rd is also where uh, the Tucson Saguaros, who we call the Bisbee Killer Termites, the team comes down to play a doubleheader for 4th of July weekend, close it out with a walk-off home run. We like Mike. We like Mike. We like Mike. Last name, last name. Mike Morris. Morris. Mike Morris. Mercury Morris, yes. Walk-off home run. To fucking Bottom close of the end, strong, yeah. Yeah. extra innings. Don't forget Burnell Daly's awesome throw to home plate yeah. to end the inning. That's right. <laughs> it's a good day. Yeah. It's great. Well, it we explains have, why our voices are fucked up. We're uh, struggling. Just trying to talk over Chad Shank with a good voice is tough. I was trying to scream over you and... Uh, Everything was failing. I slept all day yesterday. You partied all day yesterday. It's two days in a row where I... Uh, oh, this is how a party should end, not start. And, and now it gets weird tonight and tomorrow. But we'll power through. Thanks to drugs. Our podcast is sponsored by drugs we haven't even done yet. <laughs> Some of them we don't even know if they're here yet. Uh, we don't even know what they are. You fall asleep in a chair. Someone puts something in your mouth. All of a sudden, you're talking again. And we have with us not only Chad Shank, Greg Chaley, Matt Becker, Officer Bob Friendly. We have everybody's here. It's Killer Termites Day. It's a fucking room full of killer termites. <laughs> and our guests today are prison guard versus prisoner. Or maybe it's a love connection. All right, uh, so uh, uh, Officer Bob Friendly hey, is here. You're perfect. Stay by me. You're going to want to chime in on this because this is the podcast that didn't happen last week. I was out of town. But Chaley's talking at Prison Guard. Three years with Sheriff Joe? I, I started three years uh, Sheriff Joe. And I went to Pima County SO, which I'll say for about 10 months. Then did just under a year with the jail here at Cochise. And then I'm all, I won't say who I work with here That's fine. in town, but yeah, I got a couple of years. The conversation I missed is my prisoner spent 18 months in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so they started swapping stories. And Chaley took copious notes going, fuck, stand up's not here. We should podcast this. We should what? Say that again? Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting a certain age. My balls are dropping. By the way, we, we do have to mention that we've obviously changed their names. We wouldn't use their real names no, on the podcast. Absolutely yeah. not. 
Except for the guy who's in prison. He doesn't care. <laughs> oh, shit. Who's he going to vote for? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so uh, so <laughs> how did this kick off? What Do you remember the conversation where you went, oh, you were a prison guard? Oh. I think it was talking to prison guard about some of the things in prison. And then it then it came to light that there was someone who had the same stories but from the other angle. And that was when I'm like, hold on. Give I got to find a we pen. we got to fluff them. They are not professional broadcasters, so fluff them. Uh, start, start, uh, start them into a story. That well, you heard. okay, this is this is the one I remember. This is the one that sticks out. Is that the prison guard uh, said like how when they come in for processing, they there's an order to which they're supposed to be inspected, and this is naked. How's that go? Nuts and butts. That's what the guys. <laughs> that's what the guys would say. The guys because I started in the a male prison. I wasn't involved in the nuts and butts part. Uh, but this what, is before you had the tr- transgender. Yeah, and thing. this is what I think you're getting off yeah. of. Um, if the I'm not it, getting off. I'm just well, listening. I am. Put well, your am pants a bit. down. I am a bit. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious how you hide something in your nuts. Please proceed. Okay. They, they tell you a lot you of when, wrinkles in there. A lot of wrinkles. They, they tell you in the academy that your crotch and your ass is your ninety percent zone. And uh, when you're going into jail, if you're going to hide something or keister something, it's like if you're a guy, it's on your your dick, your balls, or your ass, and vice versa. If you're a female, it's in your your prison pocket up your up your back. <laughs> and so that's why we strip them naked because they're you know they're so used to you know uh, getting drugs or weapons and you know using the. Well, you hear stories so, about people that had to go to the emergency room because something was jammed in their ass on New Year's Eve. A light bulb, a gerbil. <laughs> why didn't? Why don't you just say squat and cough? Because that's <laughs> evidently what you do in prison. Well, they do that. Yeah, squat and cough. But it, why doesn't that get rid of a light bulb or a champagne cork? <laughs> it just a, makes it peek out a little so they can see just a little hit. Turtle. Is that, is that a hemorrhoid or? I, don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I have. I, I've not been a guard or a prisoner yet. <laughs> but I'm, I'm assuming that they're not, they're not. You're not trying to make it pop out when you say squat and cough. It just makes it incredibly uncomfortable for somebody to have something, and then you discover that it's there, right? You, you kind of determine if there's probable cause that they might be hiding something. Like if that doesn't look like a hemorrhoid, it, it, hey, we're gonna have to pull you aside, and they get a little more invasive. So you're kind of a doctor, as much <laughs> <laughs> well, as you are the most a qualified doctor in the room. <laughs> well, you can tell the dudes stand a little weird too. The, 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 I don't know if you don't understand where I'm going with this, but I think you do. It's not what they're doing. The order. It's the order. Okay, good. So go ahead. Yeah. And this is the order. Flesh it out. I'm going to flesh it. Okay, so the guy, uh, the, the male, <laughs> the male uh, officers, if the inmate was being a dick, just right off the bat, wanted to fight, just being a prick, they would change up the order and how he would inspect him. So uh, you're going to bend over, squat, cough. You're going to grab your ass cheeks, pull your, your ass open so we can inspect that nice brown eye. And then you're going to open your mouth. So right after your hands were right there on your ass, you're going to open your mouth, and then we're going to have you lift your tongue With up. the same fingers. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Mother always said, always bring clean underpants. <laughs> well, it was always the same two or you know, three different guards that would now, be there for the strip search. So you'd be like, hey, officer, whatever, your strippers are here because you'd see the same dude if you came in from the road crew and have to strip from every single day. You, you, you did 18 months for? Uh, piss and dirty. Piss, so I, uh, like, you go on probation uh, and then so drop was, dirty a couple you, times. And But Doug, after yeah. she told that story, he said, no fucking way. You guys meant to do that? Yeah. The order? Yeah. yeah, because there's obvious different orders that different guys got, which was hilarious because, you know. But that was a revelation, and then that was the, that was one of the, the ones that really stood out. And then was I like started asking about, a lot of questions because yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Now I can find out yeah. why the hell did you guys do it this way? And yeah. Were you guys just fucking with us, or was that on accident? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You dick with us, we'll dick with you. So. What, uh, what did you learn? Uh... Some of the hiding techniques, I guess a lot of like the work crews, basically you want to get out on a work crew because those, those are the guys bringing in the drugs, the, the weapons and all that. And uh, hold, on, hold on one sec. The, I thought that the best place to work was in the kitchen, the commissary and the prisoner like said, no, no, I worked in the kitchen. It's road crew. And if I'm you like, work in the kitchen, you're going to get sick because they're going to make you wash dishes yes. and you got to touch the trays from every motherfucker that's there and it is gross. But you said the road Zoom crew... It and you're inhaling that shit and every, if you work in the kitchen, you're going to get sick. Wow. But the road crew, I thought, well, yeah, I guess you're outside. He goes, no. Heavy lifting, it seems like. Why the road crew? 
Well, because somebody can go out there two or three days early, throw something out and say an empty Cheetos bag, and then everybody on the road crew knows to leave that bag alone or to grab that bag and quickly throw it in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> and Because why? It has goodies. <laughs> yeah. They will go so far at, at tents in Maricopa County. We were taught you look at dead birds because in tents, it's not an enclosed jail or facility. The grosser, the better. So what they do is they take dead animals, usually birds. You cut open the bird pigeon and you shove your drugs in it, like kind of tie it up, stitch it up, huck that fucker over the fence. And your normal guard isn't going to look at a dead bird. Like, oh, let me go get knuckle deep in that. No, you know, the inmates know to get, yeah, to open that up. And that's how they, that's how so MacGyver these inmates are. It's in, do really they good. check the ass or the beak first? Well, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Squad <Squanica>. cop. <laughs> Squeeze it. Well, you have to learn that shit. Like, I, I, how, when you went into prison the first time, I assume there was a first time. And only time. Yeah. Oh, so the 18 months was the only time. Yeah. Like, how, how quickly did you learn this kind of shit? Like, well, you shove drugs in a dead smart, pigeon. If you sit back and observe. And if you sit back and observe, you learn shit really quick. So... The quieter you are, the more you observe, the more you learn. So it helps a lot to just sit back and just kind of see how the people that are doing okay are, why they're doing okay and how they're doing okay. You'll see why the guys don't get raped, too. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing, too. That there's, there's don't techniques. act like a badass. Yeah. And five dudes won't gang up on you. There's Pretty one simple. Of, one of the things we learned uh, in the mail jail, it'll take peanut butter. Okay, Sheriff Joe, you get fed twice a day. Usually your breakfast is a cup of peanut butter, an orange, and some bread. If you don't want to get raped in Sheriff Joe's jail, you take the peanut butter and you just whip it in your ass. So if you're going to get raped, the guys think, oh, well, this, this dude's shitting himself. I don't want to, like, you know, get balls deep in that. So they'll give you a pass. Yeah, peanut Unless butter. Unless he really likes peanut yeah. butter. <laughs> in which case, he's going to toss that. Yeah, hey. some jelly. Yeah, I'm a bottom. Yeah. Thanks Gross for dressing up. <laughs> oh. Now it's a date. <laughs> Dinner date. Uh, you got peanut butter in my go. chocolate. <laughs> Got chocolate in my peanut butter. Uh, one thing I remember talking about was uh, the newbies. Like when the new guys came in after you had been there for a while. And then you had some... Well, some they'd always of, get taken advantage of. Or, they'd always think they'd get the easiest job. Or they'd get something for free. Or they'd get more phone calls. Or somebody would lie to them and yeah, they'd believe the, it. Yeah, that's what it was. A you, bunch of random people would keep the lie going even though they didn't hear the beginning of the lie. They'd just agree. And he'd be strung bad. along the whole time. Things like... Wait, but I did everything. Why am I doing this? I was I was I promised the house man. I could just sweep all day. I don't have to go out and work. No, you're gonna have to fucking work, and you lost all your food. <laughs> I always I, I always think about going into prison and playing the pedophile card, like like I'm a badass no. pedophile. No, no, don't oh do no, that. no, that, I know, I, I know, it wouldn't work. Is this but they always have fantasy? to be like they, they they always have to be sequestered and fucking you know. What do you call it? Well, it? They get separated to ad seg so they don't get killed because the, yeah. the rival gangs, the, they're easy pickings. If you want to move up, if you're like the newest person on like the woods or like the different Aryan Brotherhood or whatever gang you're in in prison, you're going to like, you're going to get street cred or prison cred by like often or like screwing with the chomos, which is prison jail chomos. slang for, for, for child molester. So like they're, they're the first target. Chomo. They're the first target that get. I know. I, I understand that. But I th if I was like a Chad Shank badass, it would be really funny to walk in and go, fuck, I'm a pedophile. Why can't I be put in juvenile detention? There's no kids in here. Fuck this. Who wants to be a little kid? Yeah. Who wants to be my little kid? There's yeah. dudes that walk in and do some shit like that, but usually three, four, or five dudes will gang up on them in the middle of the night, and then you got to watch them cry. That's why you need Chomo shit. gangs. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Chomos, or you're a bitch. What do you want to be? <laughs> my problem is going in as someone like me is I wouldn't make it past her. I'd <laughs> I'd choke her and fucking murder her at the fucking search part. They just put I would you never in a little chair. Yeah, yeah, but then they in a little tiny chair that gets tighter as you fought. Yeah. Yeah. Restraint chair, yeah. yeah that yeah, shit's a yeah. motherfucker. As long as I can murder one person, I'm gonna feel all right about the restraint chair. <laughs> yeah. Too late. Then, Collateral <laughs> damage, bitches. Hood on you. Yeah, spit hood. Yeah. There was uh, another thing that came up. I love the terminology. That's like the chomo. Chomo, yeah. Like There's another thing that came up. Uh, Fifi. 
Oh, so there was a dude that I lived with in my uh, mini, and basically he made he had Mini's no. Mini's a cell, or a, it's a, just a group of people. So there's like four, minis four and beds. Pods, so there's like mini two potty. All it's right. like a, it's like a classroom in a fucking bunk college beds with a bunch of like fucking roommates in college. In yeah, pretty. Much. I'm basing this on that A and E show I just watched. The yeah. sixty days. Yeah, there's about seventy people, but there's probably. Oh, 40 bunks. So every, there's a bunch of people sleeping on the ground. And All shit. of this sounds a lot like the army. This is yeah. fucked up. <laughs> it's very similar. Or MTV house rules. I don't know. <laughs> so this dude had no money. And the only way he could make money is he would uh, take, you know, hand towels. He would steal latex gloves and lotion. And he would sell oh. latex gloves full of lotion rolled up in a hand towel as a fucking wife, a wifey or a bitch. And he would sell those to other dudes for food and like... You know, self-stamped envelopes and shit like that. So that's how he made his money. Is he just made fake pussies for it's everybody? It's called a and fifi. Like, yeah, it's called a fifi in jail. <laughs> and then he also sold like time with bitches, where he would have like cutouts, cutouts from hardcore porno magazines, and he'd have them in like a ziploc bag so you could stick it to the wall in the shower. Oh, fucking like. So I, how, how did you get him in? I remember this. How do you, how do you get how those do you get pornography in? into prison? Oh, there's a bunch of different legal mail. Yeah, explain that legal mail. She she gets. That's when she's like, oh, yeah, that's because we can't search that. What's legal mail? Uh, legal mail is specifically off limits. It's a protected right uh, they might have to receive uh, supposedly uh, information from their lawyer f to help their trial that we, we can open it in her. front of them, but we can't like pull it aside out of view like traditional mail. So that's how if you want to get uh, drugs or porno or anything in, you're, you're getting in that way. Have a cool lawyer? Is that what you're saying? Yes. We're close. A lot yeah. of people are fucking their lawyers. Yeah, dude. a lot yeah. of my, dude. It, you a lot, of, a lot of dudes get female lawyers just so they can get some time alone with them. Private I'm, time, right? Yeah, there's I'm, nothing yeah. you can do. Yeah, yeah just no, yeah, press yeah, your yeah. tits against the glass. No, Midnight no, Express. no, no, no fuck through the chain link is yeah. what you said. Yeah, really? Straight oh, yeah. up. You Straight fuck up. through chain link? Oh yeah. A legal visit. We can't listen in. We can't watch. So there's like a chain so link like fence. There's like some scumbag bitches that barely pass the bar. What a in. great business idea, Bisbee. <laughs> <laughs> Our new sponsor, <laughs> whore lawyer. <laughs> I, I think there's already people way ahead of you. I'm searching you porn for chain link lawyer as soon as we're done here. <laughs> what a great escort service. Hey, you know what? You, you put out the shingle. Business didn't come your way. You still have student loans. <laughs> Belly up to the chain link. <laughs> <laughs> or ass up. Yeah, they're bent over like whore that. for a client dot com. What do you got? Well, we can end on this one. This was uh, this was a revelation between the two because they had uh, different stories on how inmates would celebrate someone's uh, birthday. They would make something from what they could get out of the commissary. Do you remember this? Well, we would see it, they make like a tweaker pie, that's what our slang was for it. They buy everything that's sugar, honey buns, uh, whatever crap, and they layer it. Snickers, and Kit Kats, anything that could melt in the sun. So you could put it in a big, like, and like a This is almost like a, one of those Oprah reunion shows where a prison guard and prisoner come together <laughs> and make it all right. I, I'm telling you, it was awesome. It's still awesome. I love hearing all this. What was it called? Is it a tweaker pie? Tweaker pie. What did you call it? They you called could, it like a Bigfoot cookie. Bigfoot cookie. That's right. <laughs> and they were talking about the same thing. But it was, they had a different name. It because depends it, on what the commissary yeah. has. So if you did, had a you, different style box, it, well, it came out different when it melted all Flesh out. out the tweaker pie for me. I just, still don't know what it is. What was the is. ingredients of the tweaker pie we, that you discovered, right? You, you didn't you make You layer them. it like a lasagna. It's basically, you start with like a layer of honey buns. You do first layer honey buns, second layer like Oreos and whatever else they could throw on this, cut it you up. sprinkle dehydrated coffee and shit in there. Kool-Aid so. powder as like on, on top. Kind of a tiramisu. <laughs> <laughs> so I just picture her making him breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but none of this stuff is technically illegal to put it all together, right? No, absolutely not. 
You so just, it a takes sugar like, high. It takes like yeah, forty dollars yeah. worth right. of candy, which is hard to get. Yeah, oh, that's okay. the. That's uh, the. You're only. That's you're the limited route. depending that's on where you're at. You're limited to the amount of commissary you're able okay. to buy per week. So some places you're able to buy twenty. Some people places you're able to buy forty dollars per week. So okay. it depends on did, where you're. Did at. you? That's have, why I was wondering why you weren't just eating that every day at the wait <laughs> no, for somebody's birthday. Well, like, uh, and oh, somebody's got to put that money on your books. So after a couple months, people stop caring about you. So like people's putting money in your. Did you have an income source? Did you have friends like giving? You have money. Again. I had a business, so I had some money coming in. You had a business in prison, a web hosting business. So, my, <laughs> so long as the websites didn't go down, I kept getting recent. It wasn't money. no, no, fee whore for a lawyer. No, was I it? Was, yeah, it was wasn't selling hookers. <laughs> yeah. Fifi.com. I'm gonna write that down. So you had commissary. You had that set. Yeah. You were good. Yeah, you could only spend forty dollars a week. So, did people know you had money? A- absolutely not. Very good. Yeah. What can you get for forty dollars? 80 ramens. <laughs> <laughs> it is like college. It's just like college. It totally is. Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> Were you ever tempted to smuggle something in for a favorite prisoner? Fucking never. It's like never? Like, there's plenty there. See, there's the plenty thing is, there. I saw a lot of dicks when I was there, but never one. I was is that what made you gay? No, but you jet, you screw with them so hard because you're a female and you're working a, a male jail. They're all the their their gimmick at lockdown. Okay, is to, wh- is to whip out their cock and to start jerking it in front of the window Mad because gunners. they think be- because that's they- happy hour here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they think uh, your traditional oh it's a penis you go run off you screw with them. Okay, finish on your cell. Yeah, this hot. Hurry up, let's go. Put a finger in your ass. They don't know how to take it. And, and then so dudes start calling them out. Hey, let her like, keep, get at it, man. Let her keep going because we're going to sell this diatribe on a separate website. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> and you, then you, what does he have to do? <laughs> yeah, you just screw you screw with them. You just tell them to finger. Oh, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, yeah. You know, finish on your cell. Yeah, do it. You know, And they're like, what are you, what are you doing? You know, because you aren't running away in fear or something. You know, you screw with them. And that was one of my favorite memories, other than hucking their food. <laughs> <into> the <laughs> no. Watching dudes jerk off. Yeah. No, encouraging ju- dudes to yeah. finish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Officer Bob Friendly, anything you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> Officer Bob Friendly just take four steps in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up because it's fucking hot as a thing in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a moist uh, uh, chlamydia vagina in this room. So uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come back even drunker after this commercial. Do you need to make a will? Need to file a living trust? Or get a patent on that million dollar idea? Do you need a lawyer for any reason at all? Well, why not just hire yourself? At FoolForAClient.com, we make the dream of being your own attorney spring to life. When it comes to protecting your family and your future, are you going to trust some stranger with a fancy diploma on the wall? What makes some attorney better than you? I'm facing felony charges for DUI manslaughter. With FoolForAClient.com, you just download pages of confusing legal speak and fill in the blanks. It's just like Mad Libs. <laughs> For almost every legal affair, don't throw away your hard-earned cash on some stiff in a suit. Go to FoolForAClient.com and show up in court in your pajamas. Thanks to FoolForAClient.com, I'm not allowed in Texas anymore. That's FoolForAClient.com with the number four because someone else has the spelled out version. I love that Bisbee was voted the number one small historic town in America by the USA Today. I just hate the fact that they don't have books here. Or music. Or meatloaf. What the fuck are you talking about? There's a place called Bisbee Books and Music in the fucking convention center mall. You fucking moronic shit gibbon. Uh, how can anyone miss it? It's, it's, there's only like three places to go in Bisbee and only two of them are worthwhile. There really are books? And music? What about meatloaf? It's next to a fucking restaurant called The Table, which none of us like to go to, but I'm sure it sells meatloaf to all the fucking paps who come here looking for some sort of healing experience that isn't as expensive as fucking Sedona, okay? So what you're telling me is we can get books... And music? 
and meatloaf? All yeah. in one stop yeah. shopping? Yes, yes, yes. You can go there and get all that shite in the fucking convention center and then go back to the fucking Copper Queen and tell everyone you had a great time. And there's valet parking? No! What the, what the fuck? <laughs> valet parking? It's not the fucking ivy, you <laughs> fucking turd monkey. No! There's no valley parking. You walk there like a normal human being, like Europeans, like pedestrians. So I bet there's no chance they have Doug Stanhope's digging up mother autographed at the Bisbee Books and Music. Of course they fucking have it. He's the only local celebrity. Everyone else is fucking dead or dying. Well, there we have it. I guess tomorrow we're going to race right out to get books, music, and meatloaf. Yeah, fucking do that. Support local businesses, you ungrateful wretches. What up? This is Will Smith, and you're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Getting jiggy with it. I don't know. Who cares? Let's go. Ah. I love when we go to break and they say, oh, but we have more. Good, because we want more. (laughs) Uh, Lady, we'll just call you Jim from now on. (laughs) (laughs) Because you look like you go to the gym. That's why. Yeah. Uh, All right, let's just start with stoma fucking. Okay, one of the what? That's a thing. Stoma. Yeah, yeah. Stoma uh, fucking. I want to preference preference this first by I got nothing against Floyd. Floyd's awesome guy. Oh. Nothing against the shit. The if you got a colostomy bag, love you. Um, but in Maricopa County, we would use those guys as punishment. Yeah, to where if you were uh, mouthing off in a pod, being being an a hole, we're gonna room you with shit bag guy. And I don't know if it was because you couldn't get access to clean colostomy bags or because it was always hot, you know, we don't got good AC in there, but they always smelled like shit, you know. God bless them, they never gave us trouble, but we would always you use them as punishment. You don't believe in God? <laughs> you obviously have such a cruel streak in you. Yeah, if only you knew. Um, <laughs> well, not only those guys, there's the guys that pretended to be crazy and never showered and you'd have to force us make him take a shower every 72 hours or whatever the fuck it was it's me and bingo yeah. and so, <laughs> so, there was I an, take you could tell they were crazy <laughs> there was an incident that happened uh that eventually led to um classmate people being housed alone or either with another uh classmate person because what happened clomos clomos <laughs> <laughs> yes I saw you yeah. looking for it. Yes. I saw Chad Chad looking it. for it. You nailed it. <laughs> on, a, on a security check, which is 25 to every 30 minutes for a general population pod, we're walking in there and make sure they're not killing themselves. The big three Fs, so fucking fling or fighting. That's what we're looking for. Uh, during one of the cell inspections, we're going by a classmate bag dude's hanging back on his cell. And he's letting his Sally just pour, like, just, like, d- drill his second asshole just right there. Oh. Cost me bag off. Oh. And it's getting, yeah, I want to say balls deep again. Right Pull off hole. the bag, sweet darling, because tonight we're going to dance. I guess there's a silver lining to it. You got to make your honey bun somewhere. And that was, that was his silver lining on that stoma was just to get railed in it and... After that, it was, okay, we need to separate you guys. You guys got your own little... <laughs> Did you let him finish? <laughs> oh, that's the fifth F. So. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Becker. Maybe he got a clean bag out of the deal. Yeah. I, I just imagine Jim, the prison guard here, lady. Hey, you, you, you go ahead. Put your finger in your ass, though. Yeah, do that. You know what? I'm going to one-up you, lady. Fuck my stoma, dude. <laughs> Come on, Sally. Oh, yeah. You want to fuck with me? I'm going to let him fuck my hole. Yeah, I'm going to fuck my colostomy oh. hole. You thought you were clever, did you? That's got to be expensive. Somebody was eating tweaker pie that night. <laughs> <laughs> Special yeah. occasion. 
There, there is a, a side story to when I was a, a real cop. If you wanted to hear someone, a dead body, get their uh, mouth finger fucked, I have a story for that. If you wanted to hear that. No, actually, uh, uh, the, the phone lines just lit up, and nobody wants to hear this very interesting story. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, this, but we'll let you go ahead this anyway. Place is no, yeah, this place is no stranger to suicides. There was a suicide call in Tucson. I was for nine months. I got, I was a deputy before I got kicked off for not being a dick. So I, I was not quite much Having of a dick. Having or get, uh, being? Not, not, not big of a dick. So uh, there was a suicide Having call. Get a little dick. <laughs> there was a suicide call. A guy, uh, he either put the, the gun in his mouth or underneath his chin, and we called the medical examiner to come out and uh, basically zip lock the guy. And because it was a smaller lady, we had to stick by in order to uh, heave this guy's corpse in the bag. And uh, she's a lackey. She's not the real medical examiner. But when she came out, she was so morbidly curious to figure out if he had put the gun in his mouth or underneath his chin. She's like, well, let me, you know, let me just figure out what happened. She slips a glove on and just goes knuckle deep in this dead body's mouth, fingering around if she could feel the palate, you know, just right in his mouth. And we all just kind of do what you, yeah, if that's your Friday night. Yes. Finish. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you think if it had uh, done the finger fucking before the person shot themselves, they would have still gone through with it? Well, I, he was a freak. He, um, he had more feminine feet than I did from wearing high heels, painted toenails, so he might oh, have been into that. Oh, yeah, you were just sitting back ogling the feet. <laughs> take, oh, we take I'm, pictures. I'm not wait, the weird the one. Fist wait, fucking. Wait, wait a minute. For the record, I have more feminine feet than you do. <laughs> Heads or tails, it's our call. <laughs> I'll, I'll whip them out. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're We call you yeah. Sasquant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense, but it seemed funny at the Becker's time. Becker's rubbing off on you. <laughs> rubbing? <laughs> no, literally, turn around. Yeah. Becker's rubbing <laughs> off on you. <laughs> uh, I did have a, a question for uh, the gentleman here. The, the prisoner. Other, the other gentleman. The prisoner. Uh, <laughs> prison guard <laughs> prisoner. We'll prison just, guard yeah. prisoner. Uh, you said something about how you get special uh, food allowances. You get two trays? Well, it depends on either your uh, religion or if you're really light. So, so explain if, that. Well, you can get a tray, tray and a half or two trays, depending on you know what your religion is. Or if you're really a, a little guy, they try to beef you up a little bit so you don't get taken Wait, advantage what religion of. gets more food? I don't, I don't get this. Anything but Christianity, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Muslims? Like I, was, I was Muslim yeah, right up Christian until that fasting food, thing. Now I just food, switched. Slightly better food. You get two trays, but you don't get any ham. <laughs> <laughs> no pork, yeah. But... You said something about that. You'd you'd see guys out there. Well, some guys would take, get taken advantage of for their half a tray or their second tray because they were little dudes. So they'd still they'd get their half a tray or their second tray, and it gets stolen from them before they even left the line. Pretty much. Did you ever get to a place where you go, "I'll oh, fuck a dude"? I mean, well, every place, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how crazy the situation is. Did you did you try to lose weight so you get a second tray? <laughs> Thought about it a couple times. <laughs> you said something um yeah, as a juvie juvies, story yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, sheriff joe's crazy about kids not in a sexual way but you know we don't uh, know that <laughs> we don't know allegedly that. <laughs> um so what happens is uh parents knock out their kids you know if they're always getting arrested hey sheriff joe scared the shit out of my kid so uh after you get about 15 or 20 of these guys he brings kids, steven seagal to your house <laughs> <laughs> knocks on your door um my God, not another bad actor. Please, Mom, no. I'll never do it again. So these juvies uh, would come in, uh, and uh, we would take them up to our remanded juvies. Basically, a remanded juvie is when you're a juvenile uh, inmate and you're being tried as an adult. So you, it's, And we had a lot of uh, juvies that were like baby fuckers, just hardcore stuff, gang-related, that are being tried as adults in the system. So when we so knew... So these chomos... Kids, Kitty would you Chomo. look up their asses too? Uh, the the male officers, yeah. I I got the joy the second half of that brief time period. You would to be look with up the children's asses, and you're better. The female somehow. ones. Yeah. I'm I'm, uh, I'm confused. If you're a juvenile and you're fucking underage people, aren't you legal? 
Yeah. I, I mean, that's not log inside. Anyway, back to you <laughs> looking up children's well, just, asses. Just been, I didn't, she didn't specify how old they were. I mean, if you're 15 fucking a 13 year old, I've done that. Yeah. Well, not, in Maricopa, yeah, I'd stay out of there. <laughs> um, but anyways, if we knew a group was coming by, we would go to uh, the juvies and just rile them the hell up. We'd get on their side, and be like, "Look, these little fucking assholes are coming in. You need to like give them hell." We go and just pound on all their cell doors, tell them they're gonna get raped when they get in here. You know where they live. You know their mother. You know the street address. So we, as soon as that—that's what day, the killer termites do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as that pod slider would open, it was game on. It was game on. They, all the inmates would just rush, uh, rush that cell door. We would bring all the little kids by, just like on TV. And you're like, ah, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in that ass. You know, I know where you live. And these, these kids are like 12 to 14. You know, they start like almost just pissing themselves. A code brown emergency almost. You know, just ready to. Code shit brown's themselves. when they throw the shit at the guards. <laughs> yeah, 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 I avoided that. You uh, mix your shit with your piss, put it in a coffee cup for a few yeah. weeks, and then uh, somebody yells out code brown. You just fling it out your cell blindly. And then Did you do that, guy? If you want to get, a, if you want to get along with the prisoners, you got to fling a few. Yeah, some uh, which, you gotta which play. led to us throwing yourself door through the trap and into the toilet you, so you guys to barely place. got it in the toilet if you were lucky <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have more than one coffee cup going <laughs> well you acquire multiple coffee cups just like you acquire multiple razors because you need one to like oh which one did i shit in <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about the flinging shit thing, and that's what confused me earlier when you said the colostomy bags guys didn't do that because no. you think they're the best equipped. No. I mean, you yeah. got like a, a play it like decorator. a bagpipe. Yeah, wank, yeah. wank, you wank. Can, those guys, you can sell that bag to the other shit flingers to get some accuracy. Wait, hang on, give me your bag. Happy birthday, <laughs> Jesus. All right, hey, any chance you can fill it up again? We got a bar mitzvah coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Great piping skills. Yeah. Oddly, not too many Jews in, in uh, jail. So. Uh, yeah. Wow. See, w wouldn't have to do figure. with the lawyers, would it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever try to fuck a Jewish girl through chain links? <laughs> no way. How dare you? Hey, uh... Any, uh, any insight into passing drugs? How, how do drugs get into jail? Oh, there's a bunch of different ways. Drugs prisoner, prisoner, you can... Wait, did you do drugs without, in jail? Without, without... Prisoner, did you, did you do drugs in your 18 months? There was plenty of drugs available. Did you do drugs? Of course. What kind? It depends on the day. What did you get? Well, there's Dilaudids and there's all types of the shit oh. that the crazy people get. So they always, you know, put they it under their tongue. On MedPass, they yeah. cheek them. They, whoa, 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 whoa. Med pass. What's med pass? So a chick comes in with a cart and your meds are all in like a tiny little, you know, Dixie cup or whatever. And then she pours water into the cup with the pills and then makes you drink the water and the pills together. So then it's supposedly supposed to deter them from holding it in, on, you know, in their throat or under their mouth. Oh, it doesn't. But there's plenty of crazy drugs like Dilaudid and shit like there and there. Like tons. Like, and, which, and that I'm will make you lose three or four days at a time, which is... I won't good digest it. I swallowed it. I won't digest it. Just suck it out of my stoma. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get high as a kite. So, so there's shit like that that I've never heard of until I was in jail, like Dilaudid, and then there's like the regular What, what was the original charge? Was it a drug thing? Yeah, it was original drug charge, and then I failed a bunch of drug tests, so... So, yeah, you were just making choices with your own fucking personal... I failed the first one, and after that, I didn't get any brownie points. There is so no reason you should have ever been in jail, is what I'm saying. Pretty much. It was all drug. It was, that was, you, I'm doing this to me. I was doing the same thing that other people were doing, and they were doing harder drugs, and they were passing their drug tests because it got out of their system in a way quicker time. So we'd go to the same rehab every single week. They'd be able to do drugs as soon as we got out of rehab, piss clean the next week. And so because I only smoked weed, I would piss dirty. So they would be able to do whatever the fuck they wanted. In they four to better seven metabolisms days. means you have to walk the dogs. I know. Get your I heart get rate up. up. <laughs> Work a little bit harder. But yeah, it was a bunch of stupid shit. Go ahead. Don't point. Just No, I, I was going to say uh, the passing the drugs to the prison guard. Well, prison guards would sneak it in, too. So there's yeah. always cool guards that would bring shit in. And you could always tell who the cool guards were. But you would never want to talk to them about it. It just 
there was plentiful tobacco or plentiful whatever in that in that area where that guy was working. Do you but, think you would have gotten along with her? Oh, I got and, along with a lot and, of the guards. All the guards there were pretty much as bigger degenerates than but some of the guards. Her. <laughs> Not even gonna lie, they were bigger pieces of shit. Probably true. Yeah. They're bigger pieces of shit yeah. than some of the guys that were in there, so. Would you have fallen in love with uh, <laughs> the jail the romance? Person? Yeah. Never no. happened? No. There's no. never Out even of all like the a... talk that I've seen, there was none that I'd want to ride or suck. There was just none. How about if it was through Chain Link? Oh, <laughs> now that's a different story. You could light some candles and really get into the mood. A little tweak of pie. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm not going to tell you guys how you sneak hooch? drugs yeah. in. That's prison insane. Hooch. I'm not going to yeah, tell you guys want... how drugs get into jail. Yeah, we could talk about the hooch. Ever... I liked whenever you talked about prison guards getting in because before that, I was thinking that the only drugs you could do have either been in somebody's mouth or somebody's ass. Oh, so well, it makes it a little cleaner sound, and if a, a cool guard can bring you something. That it came through was, balls? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only I, thing. I still don't know where you can hide stuff on balls. Prison oh, purse. I, prison I, I really want to know why prison guard. How did you be? Did you have the cruel streak going into this job? Ironically, no. I graduated college with a worthless fucking major, and that was in... So you 2007. Were angry that was and you wanted to take it out that on some innocent on fucks. When the recession started and no one's freaking hiring, so like crime pays and it pays people to deal with the criminals. But you seem to thrive in the cruelty There's a humor to of it. fucking with people. This guy's on a drug charge. There's no reason he did not commit a crime. He chose to live a lifestyle and now he's in prison for no reason and you're fucking with him and making him stick his hands up his ass and then put him in his mouth well, and you do a kooky you, dance you, and you, shit you, you glorify it yeah. well no. my mantra was the roadhouse mantra where you're nice until it's time not to be nice okay well respect in jail or prison that's the key if you are cool to the inmates if you're cool to them not cruel uh they're they're going to be cool with you there's a time to be a dick and it's not all the time so. There's times to be dainty and there's times to be a pig. <laughs> so, so you're saying out of all the prison uh, thing, it, it's called a prison purse. Oh, for your, for your snatch, yeah. Yeah, prison yeah. purse. You or, just shove yeah. everything up there, or if you got like Did saggy you? tits, like saggy balls, you take like a little bit of tape and you just tape it behind that. Because oh. they know a lot of guards are going to be like, oh, lift up your sack, let me see it. Let me see oh, your, lift what do you want to see my balls, up. fag, you know? <laughs> right. So uh, you half, as an officer, you half ask your... Did you ever find prosthetic searches. balls? I never saw the balls. Perfect. I, yeah. Go to prostheticballs.com. <laughs> 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 there was just a newser story <laughs> about a guy who got an anklet put on him after he got uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. arrested. And they put it over his sock, which is against protocol. Didn't know he had a prosthetic leg. He took off the fucking sock, the le the leg, left it at home, went out and killed a guy. Jesus Christ. Put on a different leg. He had a spare leg. <laughs> Great story. I don't know where it goes. I kind of shut down this whole fucking podcast. Which is something that's fucked up because with my drug I charge, I wasn't allowed to get work release or house arrest. But they let me out on house arrest for two weeks and fucked up and then fucking brought me back in, which was hilarious. Because I wrote a no a, about 50 letters to the lady who puts people on house arrest and she eventually just gave me two weeks, which was... Oops. She didn't oops. read the first charge. Did you, oops. Did, did no did way, release? Jeff's here, our new neighbor. Did, did you Let's go. Oh, go ahead. Go. Did, no, go. Did, did you have to mule stuff back in? Uh, on your trip back in? Oh no, there's plenty of shit. There. I, did, I didn't. I didn't think you were that kind of guy. But when I knew uh, my shady friends, I, I would have people who were going into back into jail who had gotten out for whatever reason, and they would come over and make up fucking packages for them to keister. Yep. And I would watch, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> That's going well, where? Well, <laughs> every, every single cellmate I've ever had when I first gotten in has shit out pellets. So there, I haven't had a single cellmate that didn't was fucking in a know he cage. was going to get fucked up at one point and came to court with fucking like 40 pellets in his fucking stomach and shit because he knew he was fucked. But. All right. Uh, question for both prison guard and prisoner. And if you agree to uh, go on another date, we'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the table. What's the weirdest thing you've had in your butt? Point. She pointed to a dude. Her keeper. 
you ever put anything in your butt in prison? Of course. What? What's the biggest thing? What's the most the expensive? Most dangerous Most thing? expensive. The most Let's ex- go with most expensive. What's the most money you had in your asshole? <laughs> Cell phone? Uh, probably like a quarter of weed. I don't know what that goes for. Especially in prison. A Different lot more prices. in prison. It's like Brexit. You don't know the fucking now. What's the pound worth anymore? All right. A lot of weed guys get caught when they go in because they uh, put the big glass pipe in there, too. <laughs> and the lighter. It fucking jangles too much. You brought a bong? <laughs> I am a bong. <laughs> you light my asshole and suck my dick. <laughs> I'm looking that up. Is that on your electric, board too. Dave? I don't know who had the bigger Fuck thing yeah. in their ass, me or you. I don't know. You gotta check him out. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna wrap this up before I get fucking sued like that guy that did the uh, the fucking sauna up in Flagstaff. Never mind, it's an old reference. I have to dedicate this podcast, our last podcast. We have our own female prisoner in Dickinson, Texas. She's our pet female prisoner now, and her name is Abigail Hill, prisoner number 1995104. She's in the Carol Young Unit, 5509 Atwater Ave, Dickinson, Texas, 77539. 77539. Abigail Hill. So flood her with all the emails and the the mail and shit and greeting cards and key string stuff. Don't send her shit illegal because she'll. Jail mail or legal mail. Legal mail. I don't know if she's a a chain link lawyer. lawyer Anyway, (laughs) we we have a pet uh, prisoner. So, yeah, uh, Abigail, uh, we love you. I hope you get out soon. Floyd is here. Stoma's in the house. (laughs) We're going to close this up. Thank you, prison guard and prisoner. I had a, this is the most fun I've had on a podcast in a while. Killer Termites Day. (laughs) Thank you. Mishka's going to play us out live Wee! recorded. <laughs> Doug, Doug told me I should cover this song. We were doing a show together one time, and uh, I'm a good singing monkey. I do what I'm told. So uh, this is a cover for Doug. I've been warped by the rain, driven by the snow. Drunk and dirty, don't you know? Well, I'm still willing. I was out on the road late at night, saw my Allison in each headlight. Jesus, Allison, what have I done? Being from Tucson to Tucumcari to hatch a Peter Ton apart. I've driven every pile of shit Detroit ever made. Sleeping in the van cause I never got paid. And if you give me speed, Spite and strychnine Carving up a white line Well, I'll be willing To keep moving Had my tires slashed, I've thrown up on the street, had my head kicked in, but I'm still on my feet, still willing. Smuggled pills and powders through New Mexico, goddamn drug sniffing dogs, I hid that shit up my nose, still. Willing, I've bombed from Birmingham down to Bisbee. When Natchez back to Boca Raton, 
I've done every deadly drug you mixed up in the trunk. Bombing down the back roads, we were so goddamn drunk. And if you give me speed, spite, and strychnine, Doug, I was dying while you were killing. But I'm still willing he's having a little heat stroke but I ain't no dope I know that he ain't got the mustard (laughs) I don't have anything that rhymes with mustard please hold custard 